Okay. Assalamualaikum and also good morning. Basically, if you look at here, basically you need to to draw a single. Okay. Semalam rasanya kita berhenti di sini. Okay. Uh, we continue with this. The, uh, the suitability of the Ziegler nickel tuning method. Okay, the Ziegler nickel tuning methods are based on assumed form of the model of the process. But the model do not have to be precisely known. Okay, this will make this makes the tuning approach very practical in process control application. And it is suggested to consider the Ziegler Nichols rules to obtain initial controller design. Okay, followed by design iteration and refinement. Of course, if we do the, the Ziegler Nichols tuning, actually at the end also the uh, control uh, the response of the system is not guaranteed to be uh, very good. Okay, but it is always acceptable. Uh. Okay, the only thing afterward we can refine it to get a better. Uh, respond. Okay, remember that the Ziegler Nicholas rules will not work with all plan or process. Okay, the only thing when we apply the applying the Ziegler Nicholas uh, nickel tuning methods, it may not applicable to all uh, processes. Later on, I will uh, tell you why why it is some of the process is not suitable okay as because i think when you use the ziegler nichols tuning it is assuming that your root locus will crossing the uh, crossing the imaginary uh, axis okay in that case that mean your system will become marginally stable and then after that become unstable okay but some system, some of the process, if we draw the root locus, we may find that the root locus doesn't cross the imaginary axis. So if that is the case, normally we cannot utilize the uh, uh, Ziegler Nichols uh, tuning methods uh, to, to get the PID tuning. Okay, the closed loop Ziegler Nichols tuning method consider the closed loop system respond to a step input or step disturbance with the PID controller in the loops. The method is basically just similar also to the method that we described before, the manual method, where the initially the derivative if KD and the integral gain KI are set to zero okay so the gain for the derivative and the gain for the ki are set to zero so the proportional gain kp is increased in simulation or on the actual system until the closed loop system reaches the boundary of instability this is the part where if your process always stable you cannot if, if it is always stable, if you increase the KP, it won't reach to the boundary of the instability. Okay, that's why if we use a, a Ziegler Nichols tuning method, uh, it cannot help you in, in, in working for the system which is always stable, in the process which is always stable. Okay, the gain on the border of instability is called the ultimate gain KU. So what it does is basically, it will increase the value of the KP until it reaches the boundary of the instability or what we can say the system become marginally stable. So at that point, the KP, the gain KP, okay, is known as the ultimate gain KU. So basically, KU will be equal to KP where the system become marginally stable. And then, beside that, 
the period of the sustained oscillation is called ultimate period okay because when you reach the marginally stable what happen you have the sine wave with the same amplitude okay the amplitude does not reduce and it does not increase okay so if you measure the time from one peak to another peak okay that duration is called as ultimate period once you have that two parameter two value the ku the ultimate gain and also uh, the ultimate period and then the PID gain are computed using the relationship in this table according to the Ziegler Nichols tuning method okay so basically with this method basically you just need to find these two value by increasing the KP until it become marginally stable and then once you have the response for that uh, system when it become marginally stable you will find the that KP equal to KU and then the period of the uh, from peak one peak to another peaks uh, you get that as the value of the ultimate period and then with, with that value okay depend on which controller you want to implement okay if you just want to implement a proportional controller basically just make the KP equal to 0 0.5 of KU and if you want to implement as proportional plus integral controller the KP you need to set as 0 0.5 multiplied by KU and then the KI you need to set equal to 0 0.54 multiplied by KU divided by TU okay and then if you want to implement a PID controller okay the KP you need to set equal to 0 0.6 multiplied by KU okay and then uh, the KI you need to set equal to 1.2 multiplied by KU divided by TU and then the KD you need to set equal to 0 0.6 multiplied by KU multiplied by TU divided by 8 okay so if you look at this equation all this equation is just based on KU and TU so basically you have learned the PID controller and PI and PD controller pole and zero of PID controller the effect of PID pole and zeros we learn also about the PID tuning and we learn also about the Ziegler Nichols tuning methods and we have seen also the effect of increasing the the P I and D gains okay so whatever you have learned will become the foundation for analyzing and designing the parameter for feedback control system uh, actually if you look at in the books uh, there are example actually uh, okay if you look at the books uh, there are one example 7.9 okay this is talking about the manual PID tuning that we do okay We're giving the example that if we have a, a closed loop system with the transfer function like this the process is 1 divided by s divided by s plus b divided by s plus 2 zeta omega n where it is given the b zeta and omega n is there okay so with that uh, basically and then you wanted to implement the PID okay so as the manuals I think we uh, when we following the procedure for manual initially we need to set the ki and kd is equal to zero okay so basically you just get a kp only here okay 
you need to vary the KP until it become marginally stable. Okay, when marginally stable, okay, uh, if you plot the response, the response will become like this. Okay, it is a sine wave where the amplitude is constant. Okay, the amplitude doesn't reduce or doesn't increase. Okay, so with this, basically, with this response, okay, basically, because you need to increase the value of the KP. Okay, actually, when you increase the value of KP, if you plot your from your process, okay, because your process just now, uh, you have three pole, right? One, two, three, right? The three poles. So that is your three poles. Okay, and then you can draw your root locus. Okay, and you know if your root locus is like this, it will crossing somewhere here in the imaginary axis. Okay, so that point, we can calculate that point actually. Or if you are doing experiment, maybe you, you won't see this uh, root locus because in experiment you don't maybe you don't have the model of your process so what you do you just increase your uh, KP okay until your response become like this okay and at that time actually the KP will be equal to 885.5 okay so make this one this value of the KP okay equal to KU this is the ultimate gain okay or if you just increasing your KP when your response is look like this and then set that value of KP equal to KU okay and and then afterward you measure the distance okay the time between one peak to another peaks okay this time is equivalent to the TU the ultimate period okay 0 0.83 second okay so with that two values basically you just refer to the tables no no in this case basically uh, because this is uh, just a, a, a try and error one, uh, the, the, the manual methods. So after you know the value of the KP, okay, you just uh, set the KP equal to half of it, of the KP. Okay. And then after you set the KP equal to half, which is around this one, okay. And then after that, you plot again the, the response. Okay. And maybe if you are not satisfied, you can reduce a little bit the KP. Okay. And then plot again until you satisfy with the response. Okay. And then once you have done that, afterward, you will work with the uh, KD. Okay. And then if you work with the KD, this is the response after we set the, the, uh, the KP equal to half of the KU. Okay. The response will look like this. Okay. And then after that, after we set the KP equal to 330, okay, we will get the response, what we call it the step response with KP showing the quarterly amplitude decay. Quarterly amplitude decay means the first and the, uh, the second, the overshoot of the second to the overshoot of the first is basically one fourth. That's why it is called as a quarter. So basically you start with the half of the KU first and then you plot the response if it's quite high and then you reduce until you see your response is like this where this one is just a quarter of this one 
Okay. And then after that, set the KP equal a uh, fix to that value, which is 370. And then after that, you can work out with your uh, with your KD. Okay. Actually, if you varying your KD from zero to infinity, basically you will get a root locker something like that. Okay. So that means you can see where basically you should select the the best place you set you should select the KD so that it will fulfilling your your uh, specification and then you can decide any routes for the somewhere on this root lockers so that you get the value of the KD okay once you settle for the KD this is the effect when you wearing the KD the effect of the percentage of overshoot and also the, the settling time and then after you work with the KD and then now you can work with your KI and of course if you increase your KI from um, 0 to infinity you will get a root locker something like this okay so you can determine where is the location of the roots where you wanted your system to fulfill the specification okay in this particular example basically they decided that the KP should be 370 the KD is 60 and then the KI is 100 where with that basically finally he will get a system with the settling time equal to 2.4 second and PO is 12.8 percent so this is the manual tuning, PID tuning. Okay. And if you plot the response, basically with that tunings, you get the response something like this, where the percentage of overshoot is 12.8, uh, and then the settling time is around 2.4 second. And then for another example here, uh, 7.10 is talking about the closed loop Ziegler uh, Nichols PID tuning. Okay utilizing the Ziegler Nichols uh, PID tuning methods okay the plan is same as the example before okay we have the the transfer function like this and then we are applying the PID okay the only thing similar like before we need to find the KU the ultimate gain we need to increase we set the K I and KD equal to zero and then increase the KP okay until it become marginally stable and then set that equal to KU okay and then from the response you need to find the uh, TU the ultimate period okay and then once you get these two value okay basically you just need to follow this Put the value of KU and TU in this formula for KP, which is equal to 0 0.6 multiplied by KU, for KI 1.2 multiplied by KU divided by TU, and then for KD is equal to 0 0.6 multiplied by KU multiplied by TU divided by 8. So once we do that, basically we get the KP is around 531.3. The KI equal to 12.80.2 and then the KD is equal to 55.1. Uh, okay, and then if we plot the response, what we get is basically the response is somewhere like this. The only thing, if we compare these two methods, basically the uh, Ziegler Nichols method is much easier, but in terms of of the response that we get, which one is better? Is it this one? Or when using the manual, tuning is better. Okay? The only thing, this one, the method is more tedious lah, because we need to try one by one. Okay? By increasing and reducing the KI and, and, and also the KD. Okay? But this one, once we set the KP already, we don't need to uh, vary the 
KI and also KD. Okay. However, actually, actually this one is already quite uh, good already. Okay. The only thing maybe we can just refine it a little bit more so that we can get the results similar like this. Okay. So you have choice. Actually, the Ziegler Nichols uh, method, uh, PID tuning method, is good for for disturbance. Okay. So if we uh, apply this for uh, tuning the disturbance, okay. If we use the manual tuning, we will get the response something like this. But if we use the nickel, uh, Ziegler nickel PID tuning, we will get something like this. Okay, which is compare relatively. If we compare with these two, basically, the Ziegler nickel uh, PID tuning is be much better. And then there is another example here. Okay, this is the other method of uh, Ziegler nickel uh, PID tuning. With this one is uh, this one is the method which utilized a reaction curve obtained by taking the controller offline. So basically, the main thing is that is he plot this is curve, the amplitude versus the time, and then from this basically he find the value for the r for the slope. Okay, and then with that value basically he just uh, putting in this equation and then it, it has a table also like this so for KP you use this equation for KI you use this equation and for this KD you use this equation okay and then maybe you can do yourself also uh, the, you, you can read this example yourself how it implement the uh, Ziegler Nichols uh, uh, tuning method using a reaction curve okay so you can read this example how it works okay where you can get the value of the kp 11.25 and ki is equal to 33.75 of course this one because they this example is working for pi controller so basically use this two equation sorry for not putting the example in the in the slide actually this section of the PID is adding by the books when they revise the edition okay because this part should be in the design part actually but I don't know why they put in the uh, in the root lockers part because it is related to the root lockers the other thing is in the books that I sh wanted to make you aware is at the end of the books you will see different type of root lockers being plotted okay so read this section as well because we'll give you roughly the idea of the root lockers okay if you have the equation of the characteristic equation let's say the first one, this is actually the summarize of the uh, form of root lockers that appear. Uh, sorry lah, the terbalik boleh. Macam mana nak betulkan terbalik ni? Okay. This is the first, uh, the transfer function of the process. Okay, let's say if you have, uh, the GS is equal to K divided by S multiplied by tau 1 plus 1 ok so basically you have the poles located at 1 divided by tau 1 minus 1 divided by tau 1 ok and since you have only one pole basically your root locus will appear like this because you will have one asymptote ok so you just starting from here and then it's going toward the 180 degree and then if you have a second order equation like this k divided by s multiplied by tau 1 plus 1 multiplied by s multiplied by tau 2 plus 2 uh, plus 1 so we have 
the poles at negative 1 divided by tau 1 and negative 1 divided by tau 2 okay and we know that they will be a root uh, locker segment here okay and since they, both of them will come out here from here they will meet together at breakaway point and then one of them will following the asymptote toward 90 degree the other one will follow the asymptote toward 90 degree uh, neg negative 90 degree and then if you have a three pole like this okay the pole is located here this one this one this one you know in this segment you have a, a segment here and then you have a locus also here and here we'll meet up together that's why we will break out here okay one of them will follow the asymptote here the asymptote because if you have three without zero the asymptote will be three one of them is 180 degree the other one is is 60 degree and negative 60 degree so this break up going that way and this one is going that way okay for this side this side is basically is similar to this side the only thing instead of the pole located somewhere here but now the pole is located at origin okay so the locus is similar the only thing it will start from origin toward 180 degree okay for this case also since one of the pole is located at origin so the only thing at one of the pole is from origin like that but the appearance is the same okay and for this one also same thing also because one of the one of the poles is located at origin so it just become like that okay just shifted uh, this one to here okay the next one this one you have three poles one of the pole is located at origin and then because you have one zero here so there is a zero there so that's why you have you will have a segment there and then you have a segment there okay and then because the difference between the pole and zero is is two so you have two asymptote one of them is 90 degree the other one is negative 90 degree okay and this one will meet here will break away and then afterward it will follow the asymptote toward 90 degree and then this following the asymptote toward 90, ne negative 90 degree okay the locus from here just go into the zero there okay this is the case you have repeated zero a repeated pole at origin so basically at that particular origin basically you have a locus they come out from there both of them and then mean break away also at that point and then the asymptote is one of them is toward 90 degree this the other one is negative 90 degree so one going upward the other one is going downward and then this one is where the you got two zero located at origin this double pole here two poles not zero huh? uh, two poles located at origin and one pole located here so basically okay, this one will make up uh, the asymptote basically we have three asymptote okay 180 degree from here you follow the asymptote 180 degree from here you will follow the uh, 60, de uh, 60 degree this one follow the negative 60 degree and then this one is we have one uh, two poles located here and then we have another pole lo uh, located here and then we have additional zero here okay because of that uh, we have asymptote if you calculate the asymptote the asymptote is somewhere here but since the breakaway point is somewhere here that's why it will come out from here and then follow the asymptote here this one will follow the asymptote there and then this one will go from the pole to zero and then if we have three uh, three poles located at origin like this okay so as we know both of them will break away there that point okay and each one will follow uh, one of the asymptote which is 60 degree negative 60 degree and 180 degree okay and then this is uh, pole located at origin 
three pole located at origin and also one zero here okay so the because of that it will have two asymptotes one asymptote is going 90 degree one is ni negative 90 degree so that's why these two lockers will follow that asymptote and this asymptote the only thing from um, this one will come out and will go to the zero end up at the zero okay this is more complicated root lockers where you have three pole located at origin and then you have two zero one is located here and then the other is located here because of that you have a segment between the first pole and the second pole here and then you have the segment for the third pole and also the zero here okay and then the last zero and there is no more roots so you go that way so because of that because this one will be going into the zero this one will go into the asymptote following the asymptote so they, sh they should be break in point here and then if you calculate the number of asymptote it should be only one so the asymptote is only that way okay so this this one the one at origin one of the break away point is at origin okay so we will break up from here and then break up from here so what happened one of them will go toward here and break into here okay the other one will go here and break into here one of them going this way the other one going that way okay and from the third pole here basically just come out and go to the zero and then this is another equation where we have one two three four four pole and one of the pole uh, five poles and one of the pole is located at the origin and we have two zero so we have five minus two basically we have three asymptote so three asymptote one of them is basically following this 180 degree the other one is maybe is 60 degree and also uh, nine, uh, negative 90 degree and 60 degree and then from each segment here odd and even you have a segment odd and even you have segment odd and even you have segment and then from the odd you don't have any more even so you just go to the infinity the only thing this one because uh, this start here it will go to the end up at the zero this one will start here and end up at the zero this one will start here and will start here there will be break away point here okay and the only thing you know that the asymptote is here it should be somewhere following here okay but you need to find where the lockers crossing the imaginary axis because this will help you to plot this one this point and this point you know that it will go zigzag like that so that's why uh, getting the point crossing the imaginary axis will help you in drawing your root lockers for complex system like this okay this is the another one the last one i think we have two poles located at origin and then two poles located here and this one and then we have one zero there okay so we have three asymptote 60 degree negative 60 degree and also 180 degree okay the one from here will break out and then we'll follow the asymptote you can find the where it crossing the imaginary axis and then from this one basically just come out and go into the zero this one will come out and go into the infinity if you look carefully for this figure you will see some pattern of it okay well later on by looking at the the process transfer function basically you can figure out already how is the shape of the root locus and then in fact if you don't get the detail of the uh, value of the breakaway point or where it is intercept the uh, imaginary axis also sometimes you can already plot the the root locus so any question on this chapter 7 okay the assignment that i have give you is just focus on how to draw the root locus
I didn't give any assignment on how to utilize the root locus for design purpose. Okay? Because that one we will talk in chapter 10 later on. Okay? Kalau tak ada persoalan, kita jumpa lagi hari esok kita cuti dan kita akan jumpa hari Kamis.